Hey boys, I'm here to tell you today the difference between when you should run a default versus when you should just straight up execute. So I guess the first thing to explain is what is a default versus what is an execute. And quickly, I'll just recap what a default is. It's a way that you have like a set routine to acquire some piece of map control, generally speaking. A default is open-ended. It allows you to decide where you wanna go and do like a proper mid game from there. And it lets people uh, have a little bit of freedom so that they can kind of make their own plays within a set system or set structure. So on Mirage, for example, a very popular one would be having someone smoking top mid from spawn. And then you generally speaking have either two or three people coming up here to top mid. You do some set flashes to prevent the push and then you get behind the box and then you smoke off window and then maybe you smoke off top connector as well and then maybe you pop a flash into connector um, so you do this you smoke off top connector you flash you kind of get around you you try to acquire some sort of control of, of the map here and this serves a number of purposes one it gives you a little bit of map control so if, you, if you're able to control mid, if you're able to get into ladder room and control that or control connector or control window room, then you've got some sort of map control. You're able to control the rotations from the counter terrorists. You're able to dictate the pace of the game. Um, you're able to cut off rotations. You're able to do flanks. You're able to do executes and do nice 4-1 splits. It really uh, grants you options in terms of what types of strategies that you can run. And it also works in, in another way because the counter terrorists will try to fight you from it. They want to keep mid control because it will allow them to do fast rotations. It will give them uh, a lot more space to work with. It will prevent them from getting flanked. So the CTs are going to fight for this. And if you're able as a terrorist to kind of go for even trades in a default, make it a four on four or a three on three, that's perfectly good for you because now the CTs have to split up. If they have three players left, they put two A, one B, do they do one A, one B and one like around middle area? Like where do they go? They have to split up their defenses and it um, makes it very difficult for them to get things like trade kills or multi-frags because they're unable to do setups where they have crossfires or bait setups or um, players just able to trade off one another. So the CTs want to make control as well. Now, the main purpose behind a default and you can run a default in a variety of different ways. So you could have one where you focus, like maybe you have more people coming top mid on one of them. And, you know, maybe only like one person goes underpass. Maybe you have two people going underpass on another type of default where two people's top mid. Maybe you do it really slowly where you wait for the 30 seconds at the start because you're anticipating pushes and then you go a little bit slowly. Or maybe you do it like full speed and you just come here to top mid, three people flash do your smokes, do your smoke window, do your smoke top connector, flash, flash, take everything and you take it really quickly. You can do the default at different paces, but basically the default you have some sort of structure and you have some sort of goal, but it's not an end goal. It's not like, okay, and then we're going to end up going A and, and playing the bomb. It's going to be, let's acquire this form of map control. And it doesn't necessarily even mean that you need to get the kills. It could be, let's take map control, but instead of just you know, if they fight us and obviously we fight them back, but our goal is to push them back off these spots so that we can be in good key positions, but we can do it by using our nades. For example, if, if they're playing in like ladder room, then, or they're playing on cat somewhere, we could just molly them off and make them have to play humble where if they want to actually come cat now, now, you know, we can post it here with an op or something, you know, it's like a little bit of an intimidation factor, but you're actually using grenades to kind of zone people, isolate them and funnel them out. Now, the default is very good for a number of reasons. One, because it's structured and everyone knows what they're doing on a routine, you can use it basically just about any time against any team. And it works really well if the enemy is on eco, for example. Uh, it, it works if they're on a, a high gun round. It works to prevent people from doing some scrimmy push play at you because you have this routine. The default is basically designed to be anti-push. If the enemies push at you and you're running the default, you're gonna get the trades or they're gonna be blind or they're gonna be smoked out. There's gonna be something like the default's usually like your most refined type of strategy because you've worked on it the most or it should be at least.
but sometimes the default either won't work or it's unnecessary. So the default you'll run when you're playing against a team you're not familiar with or a team that does a lot of push strats. If they're pushing into you and you run the default, you should be winning. The other time is like, if you don't really know too much about your opponents, if you don't know what type of play style they have, you might decide to run the default because it's generally speaking safe. You're not putting all your eggs in one basket. You have spread around the map, but not like in a everyone solo type of thing. You're doing it kind of together to work towards a common goal. And it's a routine. You've practiced it. So if I'm playing against a team that I don't know at all and I want to do like an A execute first round where I have like four people out here, like maybe I have one person in palace, three people here with smokes and one person middle, maybe the enemy pushes B on the first round and I have no idea that they are a type of team to push B. Next thing you know, they have like four people stacked in A and one person's flanking me from B. So that's not really good because I don't know how the team plays and I can't feel them out. However, let's say I've defaulted for a few rounds against a team I don't know, I'm not familiar with, and I'm kind of like figuring out their tendencies. Because I'll have one player towards A on the default, he can listen to the, the player in A bombsite, for example, and tell us like, okay, does he smoke and then play close, or does he play far back, like can you hear him or not, does he have an op or does he have a rifle, does he nade after he smokes, so if he comes at the start of the round and he pre-smokes A ramp, does he nade into that as well, do they double nade into there? Does he play in the bomb site? Does he play back? Does he have a rifle or not? Find that information out. Where's his teammate? Does his teammate come to connector and fight middle every round? The middle guy should be able to know this. If there's a guy connector, there's a guy window, and there's a guy cat all at the same time, you can assume that there's going to be one B and probably one A. So what happens at B? Does this guy come and smoke it? Does he op it? Does he pre-nade? Does he pre-molly? Does he try to push? Does he try to go aggro? Does he jump spot? What does he do? So if you have this information, let's say for an example's sake, they have a guy who's at B and he just jump spots over and over. Just jump spots, jump spots. The cat guy pushes off cat because he wants to come and help and fight middle every round. So he's around this area every round. Let's say there's an A guy who comes and he'll play in the connector. And then when you guys molly connector, he drops a smoke and he sits here and tries to fight behind the smoke. Let's say there's a guy at window and he tries to fight window until you smoke him off and then he'll rotate somewhere else. And let's say there's a fifth guy and he's coming A, he smokes a ramp and then he, let's say he just plays like maybe triple or maybe like in the bomb site default box. Just for example sake, you will pick up on these tendencies by doing the default, listening for info and listening for cues and tendency and just keeping cognizant of that. So if you know that there's one guy that plays A by himself and the CTs play three people towards the middle, then you can do some sort of scrimmy play. Something like um, saying like, okay, we know that they play one A, let's go and um, let's go and just run up a ramp at this guy, try to kill him with three people, maybe sneak two people with the bomb B. Because if one's pushed off cat already and you have the bomb, let's say you're you're sitting up here with the bomb, and then you have like three people going up A and getting the kill. You'll hear this guy rotating off. If he rotates off, you guys can come out B. You can do a plant for cat. You can get really good post plant positions. You can do something like that, which is like a hard counter. It's not something that you even have to prepare or talk about in a server. Like you don't have a set play based off of that. That's just something that you could do as a hard counter to, to counter that. But let's say you want to do like a, a set strat. Let's say you come towards B and you know like the guy is doing that um, jump spotting and there's another guy that's like on cat and then everyone else is towards mid or A. What you could do is you could be like okay there's one B he's got a rifle he jump spots and the other guy pushes off cat. We could just do our, our set smokes here where we do smokes that go uh, let's say f for this example you do these two smokes you do the smoke uh, a lot of teams will smoke over here um, I think there's a way to smoke the doorway off as well and then I know like there's a way for example to do a smoke for the window like this if you're able to line it up like that then that could be good oh I missed it oh well and then you just do like the molly van you molly bench and sorry molly bench and then you molly empty pillar you're able to come out this should be smoked and you come in and just clear the site and you know there's just gonna be one guy in the site the guy on market's probably going to have an op, so all you have to do is smoke him out. And the guy on cat, he's going to be smoked out, so he can't do anything. He either pushes through the smokes where he's going to die, or he sits back and waits the smokes out. 
and that time you've already planted the bomb. But you do this execute because you know, um, you don't know for certain, but you have a pretty good idea that this guy's just going to be jump spotting. He's not going to be walking up with a rifle or he's not going to be walking up an op. He hasn't done it before. There's no real reason that he would decide to do it this time. And the likelihood of him just doing it is kind of low. Uh, another thing you could do is you could be like, okay, well, we could do a, a set piece on A. We know there's a guy in connector, there's a guy in window room. Let's just early ex execute onto A. So this guy, he, he'll he pre-smoke at the start of the round. Let's just go set up our nades. Maybe have one guy go and do, like, uh, mid control stuff to keep the guys there. And we'll just do the three smokes, the common smokes where you just say, okay, let's do our A set piece. And pretty much every team in the game has a strat like this in their playbook so you do your, your set piece like that you do your melee like this you have the guy in palace he's gonna melee under the belt so you you do everything melee sandwich melee under belt because you still want to make sure like oh okay in case they stack the the bomb site this round let's you know still have our mollies up you do all the mollies you come up you should expect one person to be here and then he should be in the site somewhere and then you should expect there to be around two people through here so maybe you want to make sure that no one runs to this bench smoke maybe you drop a molly here as well but your idea is like okay we know how they play let's take the bomb site and let's get the bomb plant because we know they play one person here we can execute on him we can get into the bomb site get that kill and get the bomb planted safely and then we can play the post plant from there and if you're able to get the post plant even in like a four on four situation that's pretty good unless the cts have a really good retake routine like, the terrorists have a pretty good upper hand in that situation. Um, especially if they're able to, like, pop and get into the face of the CTs as they're, like... Let's say the CTs are, like, oh, okay, let's get ready to retake, guys. Okay, I'm smoking up Palos. Okay, I'm going to melee, like, Firebox. And then you just pop a flash and someone just, like, swings around the corner here with a flash and starts fighting you. Like, that could be really good. Or maybe they're sitting in, like, a spot like this and then you flash spawn and then he just swings around the corner and kills you. Like, there's ways to disrupt the CTs retake. So the terrorists, if you're able to execute on a bomb site and get a bomb plane in a four on four, three on three, you're in a really good spot. So the executes you run when you know what the CTs are doing, when you know what your opponents are doing. The defaults you run to be safe, to acquire map control, when you don't really know where your end goal is, uh, when you don't know what your opponent's doing, like their tendencies, do they push, are they passive, how do they rotate, do they over rotate, do they rotate slowly, um, how many ops do they have? Do they push? Like all these questions that come into your mind, then you should be doing the default. But when you know, okay, I have a good feeling that they're going to be doing uh, this sort of play, then you can do your set pieces. And another thing is economy really dictates how your opponent's going to play. If they have a high economy, then they're probably going to play a little bit more passive. They have incendiaries to work with, smokes, flashes, nades, everything. They have the whole works. There's no real reason for an enemy to push at you if they have like a full buy because then they're just wasting a bunch of grenades. So if you know they're high buy, they're likely to pay a little bit more passive. If they're low buy, if they can only afford like an M4 armor, maybe like a flash or a smoke and flash, then the likelihood of them pushing into you is a lot higher, especially if maybe a couple of them have UMPs. They're going to be playing closer to you instead of farther back. So doing a default against that type of play is a lot safer because you don't want to do an A execute suddenly when you have like an, a UMP here and another guy, let's say like you, they double up. So like one guy's here, one guy's in that corner, maybe like one guy's here and another guy's like here or something, or maybe one guy's there, one guy's here. And then if there's a flat, like this guy's watching this, if there's a flash, he turns around, fights anyone in A ramp, pops up, kills anyone here. If you do an execute into this type of setup, you're probably going to have a really bad time. So if you know your opponent's low economy, you're probably not going to want to do something like this. It's probably going to get you killed. Anyways, I tried to keep it short, but I can't, I can't keep it short. I can't keep it simple. I have to elaborate on things. I'm sorry. Anyways, hope this helped. If it did, cool. Leave a like and other good stuff. Okay, catch you guys later. Peace.